Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be showing you how to install a 95 or 96% mobile home furnace. Now, this furnace is going to save that much percentage when it comes to your gas bill. So instead of 20% of your unused fuel going out the chimney, you're gonna have only 4% of that unused fuel going out. So it can be a lot of savings when it comes to your gas consumption. In addition, you also have less of a potential for danger because as you can see, we have PVC venting going out instead of metal venting that gets a lot hotter than PVC. So let's get right into it. All right, so here is our new Revolve gas furnace. If you look for a mobile home furnace, this is probably going to be the, the brand that pops up. Um, so I'll show you the difference here. So same front cover has a filter there and that filter can be uh, replaced. I'm not sure if you can get a cleanable one so you don't have to replace it, but as you can see, this looks quite a bit different. We have our blower and then we have our exhaust on the left side and our intake on the right side that goes into our burner box. Then we have the inlet for our gas line here. And then down here, we have an opening for a evaporator coil if we had air conditioning, but we do not have air conditioning on this one, so it's gonna be real straightforward. So that's what that looks like. We'll go ahead and get the old one ripped out and start this process. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to turn the breaker off for the furnace. So right now we have this off, but um, we're gonna show you right quick with the power on with a hot pen. You can just put it on the black lead and you should get power. And now as soon as we turn this one off, we notice that sound went away, so we're good to go. Now if yours isn't labeled, you can just flip these off one at a time and when that stops beeping, then you're good to go. So we can go ahead and disconnect the thermostat wiring and the 110 volt power. We're gonna take the fan out just to make this a little bit lighter. And this is probably the hardest part if you're replacing it with an 80% furnace. But what we're gonna do, since we're just using this as a chase for our new pipes, is we got a 12 inch Sawzall blade and we're just gonna cut this off um, about a couple inches from the ceiling. And that'll make this sliding this out really easy. Next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our gas meter off. So we're gonna spin this until these holes line up here and that's good to go. And the reason that we have to do that is because if you notice the gas line here, it threads in underneath the furnace here and our valve is after that point. So we'll take this flex line off and we'll actually unthread this whole piece, which will make it to where this furnace will be able to slide out and then we can attach the gas once our new furnace is in. All right, so our furnace is loose. There was this little adapter piece that we took out. There was just four screws here, but everyone installs these a little bit different. So all of our electrical is disconnected. And as you can see, all we did was we cut this straight with this uh, long Sawzall blade here. And that's gonna be really easy to route both of our two inch PVC pipes up there one for intake and one for exhaust. So now that this is free, we're just gonna pivot this and slide it out and then we'll get all of this cleaned up. I wanted to take just a second to talk about something that I'm thoroughly enjoying this fall. As the summer season tapers down, uh, we get into maintenance season. And something that I've really enjoyed is Jobber and having their maintenance plans that are automated and I don't have to do anything. I can just schedule out the maintenance visits, go and do them. It's already billed. It's on an auto cycle. You can do it monthly, quarterly, uh, yearly, and it's all automated and I absolutely love it. Another thing that I really like is their request form. So if someone calls me and says their heater isn't working, I simply send them this request form. They fill it out, hit okay, and it auto saves on Jobber and I don't have to put any information in, it auto saves and saves me so much time. If you're in the service industry, I highly recommend Jobber. Check them out in the video description where you can get a 14 day, no obligations trial to see if it's a good fit for your business. All right, so we got all of this vacuumed out. Um, everything looks good. We're going to get our new furnace set in place and then we'll show you what we got. All right guys, so we got our furnace in place 
everything fits perfectly here. We've got to drill our hole here for a gas line. We're gonna use this same one and thread it back into the gas thing down there with some pipe dope on it. And then our condensate line will just go straight down and we'll drill another hole for that down there through the floor. And yeah, this is what we've got. So this is the room we have to work with. So we're just gonna do an immediate 90 and then another 90 straight out. And then same thing over here, 90 and 90 out. So we're gonna get a few screws th thrown in on the bottom and then we'll put this cover back on and we'll be completely done down here. So here's where we're at. We're just about to get started on this. And the plan is here, we're gonna put our coupler on, 90 over, 90 up. And then we'll be about right here and we'll send down the pipe from the top and we'll glue it on both sides. So we have our electrical connections made here. Uh, we have our on off switch there. Our thermostat wires are connected. There's just the red wire and the W since this is just a gas heating only. We have our flex line going to our hard pipe here. And uh, we ran out of 90s, so we used some mix match stuff here, but we just got the gas turned on, sprayed everything. Everything is golden there. The only thing we have left to do is extend our condensate drain down into that hole, and then we'll seal up both of those holes with some caulking, and we can put this front cover back on. Once we do that, the last thing that we have to do is this, and then we'll be ready to fire this guy up. We got here at about nine and it's 12 o'clock right now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is complete. We have our drain, with our extension. Both of those holes are sealed up. So we're ready to go ahead and pop this bottom piece on, clip it into place. And that's all there is to that. Um, and last but not least, we have our PVC um, all finished up. So the intake is not as crucial that it gets glued um, as long as everything is in place well and it's not gonna move around. But the exhaust is critical that it is glued because it can leak if it is not glued properly. So we just made sure that our clamps here are good and tight. So we're ready to start this bad boy up and make sure that everything works like it should. We're gonna go ahead and flip this back on. Put that guy on. And our gas valve is in the on position. You should see this glow rod light up in just a second. And there it goes. You can see it glowing red. Sometimes it takes a couple of attempts because there's air in the gas lines. So I'll let it attempt one more time. There we go. Got ignition. And here in just a few seconds, our fan will kick on and it's completely normal to smell that kind of every season when you turn on your heat the dust and stuff burning off the heat exchanger. So our fan just kicked on. So just something to note on your 95% furnace, it is a little bit different in that your fan speeds are here. So you don't have to adjust them here. On the control board, you can simply drop it down and you will see that the fan speed will go down. So if you've got way too much fan speed, you can adjust it there. And same with cooling. If you want more fan speed, you can go left. And if you want le less, you can go to the right. We're just gonna let this run for about 30 minutes. Um, we're gonna check our static pressure and our gas pressure. Now, if you wanna see how to check the gas pressure, um, I've got separated, separate videos dedicated for gas pressure and static pressure. So make sure and check those out. All right, so here's what we got up here on the roof. Everything is done down there. This is the absolute last thing we're gonna do. So we just cut a hole in this top piece here. 
Um, and we're just gonna pookie all around this and then we're gonna throw these two elbows on, one out this way and one that way, and this will be completely done. And the reason I'm using pookie is because I'm gonna go ahead and fix this in case this was ever leaking. As you can see, it's in pretty rough shape. So I'm just gonna pookie all of that and the top and then we'll be golden. All right, here's our finished product. So everything is sealed up here and this roof jack is also sealed. So this job is 100% complete. Well guys, it's as easy as that to install a 95 or 96% furnace in your mobile home. As you saw, the PVC venting was really easy. We could reuse that existing chase that pretty much all mobile homes already have. The only difference really is that you have to run that condensate line outside and you can just run it away from the foundation or whatever and you're good to go. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you'd like to see how to do an 80% furnace instead of the 95%, check out this video right here and we'll show you how to do that as well. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.